Alrighty then, it's Friday night. Let's get into this here tonight. We're covering six topics and got to tell you on Monday, we are going to be doing a special event. Tell your friends, make sure you don't miss out on that one. I am going to talk to you guys on Monday um, about how to beat a combine or a gauntlet using Algobox for free. And if that's you, if that's interesting to you, come back on Monday. But today we are going to cover six topics. We're going to hit the two killer weeks we just went across, the two big bonus days that we hit last week, the red day. That was unfortunate that we hit yesterday. Gear shifting on those instruments. I've uh, got some questions around that. Tapering expectations as we go into next week. Next week is going to be vital. As you are planning your week ahead, I'm going to show you guys how to use the calendars, of course, and all that good stuff. Let's get into it here tonight and get this done. It is Friday. Let's do this. Then let's come on down here into our training window of course i have to always mention make sure you smash that like button and drop us a comment a little, little bit later and don't forget to hit that notification icon if this is your first time with us all right so this is a list that we are covering here tonight that we just discussed there and of course again the really important one there i think is monday and this one right here on next week okay tampering those expectations and i think this one is really key too I think you guys are going to like talking about the red day. We're going to learn a lot through my own scenarios of what I was going through. The Delta Vision, what I'm going to call like sort of like having that tunnel vision. We're going to call it Delta Vision because I saw that Delta and it just told me I thought we were going to have that play right there. Ended up pulling away with red day. Three losers in a row and quitting at the end of the day um, for one of those. And let's go through all of that. So if you have already got your Econo Day calendar, which uh, hopefully some of you guys have already gotten, again, you guys can go and order one of these if you uh, have got questions about how to get this. I'll try to put a link down in the description down below. If it's not there, check it out in our Discord. But this is going to be a full month, folks. Look at your calendar. Okay, this is, again, all of the events, all of the news events. If that'll go away. <laughs> okay, Falster on Facebook and all the others, you know the deal. Um, there is a ton of events coming this month. Okay, so we are still going to have some additional volatility, but what did we just do? We just finished out, remember the videos that we've just done before, showing you guys from January, we had the three circle days, the big, big days. That included the FOMC, as well as earnings reports, and this week was even bigger. Huge numbers you guys were putting up. We're going to talk about the earnings and show you guys the results from our members, as well as my myself. Um, looking at our calendar ahead, I'll talk more about this next week on what we're going to be looking at, but put this in your journal notes. These last few weeks, what you have been experiencing, that is high level VIX. We had the extra earnings. So a lot of people who are new, again, not for necessarily, you know, you guys who've been around the markets for a long time, you know how the market shifts and things, but a lot of people still don't understand when or how to plan out when that's going to occur. Earnings report was a big one. This, you need to mentally prepare yourself for next week that look, what you have experienced, prepare your mind first to go, next week's gonna be different, okay? We're gonna be your don't don't be like oh you're used to taking a trade every five minutes um last two weeks you know recency is key your brain starts locking into that five minute routine now you're gonna need to be starting to get a little more patient next week which is about what i want to say about tampering expectations for the next couple of weeks i'll try to remind you as we go through next week um as we kind of go through results and stuff like that two big bonus days from last week um let's go through some of that so the short answer is, you know, for myself, I hit a $30,000 day and a $13,000 day uh, pretty well back to back. You know, look, I'm not the biggest trader in the world. We've seen, you know, some crazy stuff going on with stock people and whatnot. And you're seeing, you know, people are all out there. You're probably feeling like, you know, looking around, your friends might be like, man, I just killed it on GME, man. I got this huge GME run or I hit Tesla and what I call YOLO players. Okay, There's a lot of YOLOers right now that are like, yeah, you know, I'm the best trader in the world. Look don't get disillusioned by that okay they hit a couple of big days so what okay if they didn't make enough to retire on don't come talk to me they're like oh i'm in six figures dude are you gonna retire on your 70 hundred thousand dollars no okay if you cannot work on it consistently and i'm saying hitting those numbers consistently but i'm saying on top of your big wins like that you got to be able to be consistent that's what we are here to do is consistency doing this like a business and we plug away that there are times like right now and i have been telling you the last two weeks that we would get those extra opportunities right i was going to pull this one up real quick here what's this kc kc hitting 6500 in his live account here today that is huge awesome work there the drawdown not bad at all look at this 
profit factor, huge 2.2 profit factor, 73% profitable. Amazing, amazing work. Again, these are the types of stats that we're gonna see right now as the extra volatility comes in. Now, is 6K gonna be a normal day? No, KC is, you know, he's around 17, 1800 and with a target of 2,500. That's his daily targets in here. You know, at hitting a $6,500 day, the, we were seeing these repetitively. So if you saw these numbers coming, look, we're not trying to disillusion you to go, oh, that's what we're hitting every day, right? You know, my average, I'm trying to get somewhere between one and 4K a day, and that's my consistency over time. However, during when those, we get this bonus windows where we get this extra volatility, we are going to hit it, okay? Um, so I want to talk about those two days, which we did, okay? $13,000, $30,000 day, but we also had a, I think I, it was minus 6,800 red day. Um, so what happened on that day? I think we can learn a lot more from the loser days. You guys have seen, you know, our strategies, you've seen the, the winners. Okay. But let's talk about, um, some of, some of the losers. Okay. I'm going to come up here and we'll type red day. And let's go to the red day. If you guys want to check out all my red days or, you know, red days from the crew. Uh, this was back from January. Uh, where's the most recent one? Hold it. My red day together. Red day yesterday, 413. There it is. Okay. Here's our red day. So there's me. Oh, 6970. Sorry, not 6800. 6970 on the day. That was rough. Okay. This was that day that the market just pushed and pushed and pushed. I was expecting a bit of a shift into the earnings. It was the biggest earnings report day of the two week event. Um, I think around 280 plus um, companies are going to be reporting after hours at 420. And I just, I got my head locked into that and I got. I got dealt with. Now, speaking of dealt with, Delta, okay, here was, that was my final trade. Let me show you where this thing started to go wrong. Um, you know, it was a good play sitting in here, okay? It wasn't like I started out taking a bad trade. Now, mind you, I did not trade the morning session. I was just coming in the afternoon, but what started to get me was good setups at the end of the day, okay? We had this nice PRZ um, cross sitting right in there. We had Deltas coming in right here on the top side, which look, we should have gotten a little bit of a ump. Was hoping we would get a little ump right there. Did not, got this little pink dot shift. I mean, this one right here, this is the golden goose normally, okay? Normally I'm gonna, you know, again, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hit a home run off of a, if I'm long's favorable and we got MACV going up, but I still thought I could get to target one. Okay, I'm trying to get 10 ticks. Well, did not get my 10 ticks. It gave me maybe six ticks and then kind of inched its way. It took a while, just, you know, grinded there for a bit and ended up popping up. Um, I had some chop, some some opportunities to kind of bail out of it, but I did not. This is actually a great play. What do we call this? Pop quiz, ask yourself, what do you see here? Give you a second to think about it. What is this? We've got Delta King, number one. We've got Delta, that is King timing. See the pink right there? So it's pink, we know that, and it's a crossover. We also have a crossover timing right there. Anyway, good play, any other day, any other situation, the scenario, just, it caught me, okay? Then I got a pink dot up here. This is a power dot <laughs> coming in right there. You know, lots of confluence, you know, to be able to try to take that trade, but it just did not work. Um, I don't know if I have the after picture of that. Um, oh, I believe as this cross came in, I believe I added to the position as well. So, you know, it was the first, the first one was a, you know, relatively deep hit. I think that was ended up, um, I believe it was minus 2,500, like right off the bat, off of my first trade as that one pulled up and out of there might not have been that much. I had to go back and look, but that one I had, I had gotten in pretty good on that one. Again, I was really just trying to get 10 ticks out of it, but I wanted to, you know, try to get my pay. Anyway, it was a trade. Okay. Not, I wouldn't say it's a bad trade, but um, you know, I also had some other things telling me, I mean, I was excited about playing that level right there. Okay. This is a dynamo leg. We had a dynamo leg straight up and then we started to curve up and get that location where we could get the, um, little bit of that parabolic capitulation and the zoom, but nope, wasn't then it continued to push up and just continued to climb. Um, and I really thought that there would be some, some amount of danger coming in or the uh the earnings reports coming in after hour okay lower time frame on my other setup look so at this point wherever time this was again i saw all the delta coming in and i just got delta zoned okay i just was like 
high balls in and I got tunnel vision, but I call it delta vision here. I mean, I was just like, delta, delta, delta. I mean, and because you guys know, I mean, that's, that is such a huge, powerful setup. You know, anyhow, that was bum deal. Um, let's see, as that one progressed through, there were a couple other people who had red days on that. Yeah, so here's me opening up on one of my positions. And again, really just, I see on, on this time frame, I'm seeing big delta right there. But look right here, what is that? Okay, once that showed up, what should that have told me? All right, this is the, uh, okay, I should be really thinking this. You know, maybe abandon that ship here. Let's not get, you know, let's not get crazy with this trade. Um, but anyhow, it was there, green dot, and green dot just pushed it. And it's not even just a green dot, what is it? It's a green dot headshot. So I am now with longs favorable with I'm telling you right now, the Mac V was also green. And here's me trying to take a scalp down. And of course you can see what I was targeting, right? I got two gold boxes. Again, I also kind of, you know, got eyeball zoned on those gold boxes down below. Wanted to see if we get that to there. Cause I'm like, well, even if it's not just 10, Hey, I could you know pull it out. If it goes down that way and it starts to hang, I could close out. I had felt like I had, the opportunity to do so, I did not. Um, so even more so, more reason, as this thing put in a red dot here, so it should have been a red headshot for me on the higher time frame. So again, there's all my reasoning for why I was trying to go ahead, and this is the place that I was gonna try to make a stand, take a short, um, tried it three times, and you know ended up wrecking me almost 7K. Um, and one of them was after, actually, I think it was four trades after, because I took it right around the 415 scenario and end up getting, getting borked on it. Uh, that was earlier in the session. That was not me. Yeah, there was me talking about calling it ahead of time, looking for it. So I just already had my plan in my head at the time, what I was looking for. And I just got zoned in on that. Anyway, that's my red date. Um, we got lots of other things here to cover. So let's go into the next thing. I want to talk about gear shifting. Um, I had a conversation with uh, John recently about this. Okay, gear shifting. Okay, what is this? So he was like, "Well, I mean, is that a car thing?" Okay, well, let me be very specific. Okay, this is for instruments, uh, and we're gonna call it instru. Well, instrument selection. Um, you know, in general, we want we want the fast, right? We want to make the most amount of money in the shortest period of time. So, in general. We want stuff that's moving fast. Because remember, our setups are really dependent on, give me a setup, right? Give me something. Give me, we're, again, we're looking for structure. We're looking for, in our case, a lot of our things work together. We're looking for multi-fib, Elliott wave, the, now we've got Delta, so order flow scenarios. And we want those to show up pretty quick, right? We want to be able to sit down, take our five trades, right? If you got your five trade tracker, per session and I want to get those relatively quickly and if I get them awesome so what does that mean fast you need to start to kind of recognize if you're new you know look I know most people kind of already know this so but you know just let's let's go over some some recap here okay if I want fast let's start over here with the list here okay NQ is the fastest guy on our list okay now some of these are going to be semi debatable because some of them are pretty close to each other in their speed but I'm, I'm going to lay these out the way that I think of them All right, so here's our list. We've got the NASDAQ at the top. Okay, now these are gonna print out in your list I'm gonna, or in, in the room if you type exclamation mark gears. Okay, um, that's will, this will pop out in the room. We'll talk about the commands here in a minute. But NASDAQ, okay, so what am I looking at most of the time? Right, all eyeballs right here, usually. Okay, it's the first place I'm gonna look, NASDAQ. Okay, now if the market's going super fast, Okay, then it then this is everything gets accelerated. Okay, and this thing can start to go crazy. So there, it, this should come with you know a big, a big asterisk on Nasdaq. Um, when the market gets really slow though, what's awesome is all we got to do is shift up and shift down. Guess okay, where the gear shifting um, analogy comes from? Uh, like a gears in a car. If you're going downhill, you need to shift down, right? You want something slower. So this is a general list. Uh, I won't you know, harp on this too much. I know you guys are super smart on this, but just know, right? Write these down, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do. 
down this list, they get slower, okay? Now, usually I kind of stop my list right about here. I don't um, trade much of the 6J or 6E uh, much at this time, um, just you know, for a lot of different reasons in the current market conditions, okay? And there's such great opportunities up this direction. Another one is a little bit weird is crude oil lately. Uh, crude oil is, I think, really being massively manipulated. I mean, it's all over in the news where people are, um, you know, you got OPEC that can control price and got their thumb on the scale of the supply demand thing. So there's not true supply demand. It's artificial. So they can, you know, basically steady this thing out. It's not nearly as volatile as it used to be. So crude oil has kind of become one of those that I'm like, eh, I don't really look at that too much anymore. Okay. Um, gold. Um, this is a early morning play. Okay. Um, people may not know this, but while we're talking about the shit, the, the gear shifting here, you know, this opens up early. Okay. 8.20 a.m. for the gold desk. So, you know, about an hour and 10 minutes before the, uh, you know, the U.S. markets open. You know, gold is a good one for people who are um, early morning traders. we got people in, you know, um, all around the world. If you're in Australia, you're in the U.K., this is a great one, you know, for you to kind of trade before everybody else kind of gets in. It's awesome. Um, or people who got jobs here in the U.S. and you got to go to your job, trade the gold in the morning. It's a good one to look at. And of course, we have the audio box room for gold, too. So this is kind of a goldie right here. OK, um, check out that gold. It's a good one. Um, YM and RTY really like these as well. These are solid. OK, solid instruments right here. OK, now ES. ES. I mean, I really want to be able to trade ES. In fact, that's what I ended up getting a red day on. OK. But this is going to pay you, um, you know, double plus. And I mean, even after commissions, you're getting paid double on this, right? $12.50 per tick. So you are, you're getting paid a lot more to sit on uh, these trades. And, but most of the time it's, you know, it's, it's also very slow. So this might move a quarter of the distance that NASDAQ or the Dow might move. So. I'm still going to stick up here with these. However, when the market gets clicking and ticking and it's going, you know, why not? Okay. If this guy is going to move, yes, you yeah, know, we're going to grab it. All right. So that's the gear shifting. Hopefully you guys kind of get that information in digested. If you have any questions around the gears that I didn't cover on that, you know, hit me up, feel free to ask, but in general, you need to be thinking what's the current speed of the market. How do we answer that? The VIX. Okay. And you guys should, you know, if you guys have been in our program for a while, you already know how to read the VIX, right? Type exclamation mark VIX in our room, pop it out. You want to know is, are we rising or are we falling? And you can compare from the previous, which we have also in our room. So let me show you those two things right here while we're here. So type exclamation mark VIX. And that's going to kick out this detail right here. Let me move this up and zoom in. Oops. Right there. Okay. Got your previous and you got your open and your current. Okay. So basically just use this information, tell if we're getting higher or lower. You guys remember our old videos. You need to go back and watch the training videos to know if, um, you know, if we're in 13, 14, that is that sweet spot in general for most conditions right now. We are still well high. We're up in the twenties and thirties. So again, extra VIX, but when you get that 13, 14, that's what I kind of call normal market activity. Um, and knowing how to play with some of that. There's the VIX. If you want to get that gear list in case you didn't get it in your notes or you need it some other time or you forget, you know, whether than pull up your notes, you can just get it right there in the room anytime. Okay. And there's that list from top to bottom. Um, you know, there's six, a even included. And of course, micros, their equivalents right there. You can get those in the room anytime. Okay. That covers our gears. And we talked about tapering expectations for next week. We'll talk about some more of that on Monday. Um, let's go into some of our, performance here we are right at i've got one minute left here to make a 20 minutes uh 20 minute cut here so let's go and look at some of those uh results and i did want to answer one i want to answer one question that came up earlier today we're gonna to do ask me any questions one here i'm gonna do that as a bonus i'm gonna do 25 minutes tonight all right so 561 for Sting Ox, awesome work. 84% profitable. Where is that profit factor? 4.18, y'all. Y'all know what that means? That means his winners were 4.18 times the size of his losers. Awesome work there for the Sting Ox. Tommy P, $738 on a Friday. Awesome work. 
profit factor. This is the big one I always tell you guys about. 2.28, again, 2.28 times the size of his losers. 66% profitable for $700. Awesome work. Let's come up and got any more for the Friday folks, uh, folks putting it out here. $920. 91% profitable, holy shnikes, and profit factor, 19.4. Okay, this guy may as well have had 100% today. I mean, at 19.4, you have to kind of learn what it is. Probably the scratch trades and things, but basically, that is an insane profit factor. But if you're wondering about that, it's probably because of, yeah, it's actually scratch trades on that. Um, so it really didn't even have any losses. 1,300, 100%, who got 100% today? Bob, Bob crushing it 1300 seven trades 100 percent profitable bob with 100 percent extra points for him we went over kc stats earlier awesome work playing again he does two accounts in his live and he's got you know special circumstances you guys can go watch the kc video awesome video interview we did with kc if you guys want to go watch that one go look that one up just type in Vinny e mini kc video or kc interview that's going to be a goldie Oh, man, appreciate you guys putting in these videos. Man, John, this was such an epic one. If you guys want to go watch this little video clip, he actually recorded his uh, his trade while he took this one. That was awesome. We had a few other people that posted in a couple of those as well. That was so epic today. Kevin, uh, trading the micros. Uh, awesome work. 66 bucks. We got profit factor 2.05. Two times the size of his losers. Awesome work. Benny Hanna. Um, was this from earlier? Oh, this is from yesterday. Okay. I was like, we're going into some other stats. Anyhow, if you guys want to go and check out all of our performance reports from our members, you can come check those out. We've got lots of trade setups and things. Look, oh, let's check out Mr. Neon Knight throwing down 126, 100% profitable for Neon. Awesome work for Neon as well. Well, well done. Now, I want to answer one of the questions. Is this one of my big days? Oh, this is my 15K day. Yeah, that was awesome. 12.58. On this one, 88% profitable. I'll give myself a little pat on the back for that one. Tiny little max drawdown, a thousand dollar drawdown for 15,000. Again, I think I was very overconfident from the days before when we had that uh, those tough ones um, as well. So yeah, you know that happened. Um, I want to answer one of the questions about double cross, double move. Okay, double cross, double move. Let's talk about this one. I had a great question um, from Dorothy today and going into her middle 40 day scenarios and asking questions she wants to focus on the dcdm double cross double moves these are awesome awesome plays if you guys don't know about these um go look up double cross double move strategy pretty sure we're the only ones that do it so double cross double move strategy but if you're googling it type in Vinny e mini double cross double move this is an awesome one from one of our members today this is not me look at this he called it perfectly um I believe this was Tommy or Kevin. And I apologize, guys. I, I forgot who, who put this one in. Um, but this was awesome. You guys, you saw the Delta come in. Again, Delta ended right here. Look where he could tell, right? He already knew back here that the Delta was in at the large timing. How do we know it's large timing? Because we've got blue right here. Blue vertical. What do we got right here? Pink vertical. Awesome. So what do we get right here? Double crosses come in. Now... Dorothy's question was, great question, okay, um, we'll put this one to yellow so you can see it. How do I know when DCDM versus reversal okay, on the double cross? So, great question. We know we're going to get a power move when we get that double cross. So the question is, is which way do we play? I'm gonna give you guys a very simple, easy way, okay? If we're out in the open, we are DCDM. That's it, okay? Out in the open, DCDM. This is your rule, put it in your notes. If you are a double cross, double move player, write that down and I'm gonna show you what it means, okay? But get it in your notes. Now, out in the open, DCDM. So the question is, is, is this out in the open? When I say out in the open, that means, do I have anything else around it? Is there a dot there? Then that's not out in the open, okay? That means it shots fired, okay? I got a dot around it, nope, I'm not interested. If I've got a PRZ, 
right there. Nope, we're doing reversals, okay? So if there's anything around it, we're looking for a reversal, okay? You got something else with it, doing a reversal. If it's out there in the open, again, at the time that this fired, forget this red dot is there, because this is after, okay? But when this fired, what did you see? All you saw, double cross, double move. There was nothing there except king timing, right? Which, what does king timing do? That enhances whatever's coming, right? The big move, we're expecting a bigger move off of the king. So I can do one of two things. I can either add to position, get a little bit bigger, or I am looking to hold the position for a bit farther. And what better trade setup to hold something longer than target one and target two than a DCDM? Because that's the other thing about DCM, DCDM that I wanna cover here tonight is how to bypass target one and target two, and we're looking for a bigger trade on that DCDM. All right, so DCDM, we know exactly where the target is. How do we measure it? Right here. You can use your fib tool, and you know I'll, I'm not gonna go through all the details on that here tonight. You guys go watch the DCDM video, but there we go. Boom, boom, pow. You know exactly where this is. We're measuring from that pivot to the center. Now we're extending out. So I do not need to worry about target one, target two, somewhere around there. Now I get to put both of those, doo -doo, take them down, push them out to that spot right there. This is why this is one of those great trade setups that we absolutely love. So to answer Dorothy's question, if it's out in the open, DCDM. Again, I really want just a push out in that double cross, double cross. They're just there, okay, with nothing else. If there's a PRZ, we want to reverse it. Let's see if we got some examples of that. Now, I'll say that, look, this is another one that was just so awesome because you got the red dot to add to position. So um, I hope if it was Kevin or Tommy, I apologize if I wish I would have remembered too, which one of you guys posted this because you guys are freaking awesome. But I hope you added right there, right? Let me know down in the comments if you did end up adding to that position as well. So you enter in the position, and then as you get a red dot right here, you add to that position. One or two contracts, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding right there at that spot. And then boom, the dropout, huge, huge trade. This is gonna be a multi-thousand dollar trade off of one of those, beauty. So double cross, oh, here it is, perfect, okay. Double cross, is that out in the open? No, why? Because we've got a PRZ right nearby, okay? Now, somebody asked, she also asked, well, what if it's, what if the crosses are not in the PRZ box? Well, just like this, okay? No, this is not inside the PRZ box. In fact, it's better if it is. I want to take a reversal off of this. So we are reversing, playing it just like a PRZ cross. Okay, what's a PRZ cross? And these, these are things you need to know. Okay, if you don't know what the PRZ cross strategy is, simply PRZ, cross inside of it, we're taking a reversal in the direction of the color of the PRZ. Very simple. Now, we've got double cross. All I'm doing, that's just powering it up. So that means I'm taking the the PRZ, but now it's a double cross PRZ, super powered, right? So stop underneath the crosses and we take that reversal, big boom. All right, you guys get that? So if we're out in the open, continuing in, which is what a DCDM is, double cross, double move. If we are coming into a PRZ or if there's a green dot in that scenario where we're coming down into this area like this, green dot or green PRZ, we're going to reverse it. And of course, vice versa, if we are doing a red side, I think you guys got it. So I hope that covers some awesome stuff. Don't forget on Monday, we're gonna do that how to beat a combine or a gauntlet using AlgoBox for free, funding your account yourself and getting AlgoBox and letting it pay for itself. We're gonna talk about all that on Monday. It's gonna be awesome. Don't forget gold as uh, as it currently is, is going away folks. If you, are, if you ever thought about joining in with us, you're gonna need to go and get that gold offer. It is going away. I was supposed to do that Ninja Trader. I thought we were, well, originally we were uh, scheduled for the fourth to do the Ninja Trader presentation. Um, they wanted us to wait until we released our new website because they didn't want to get confused with the branding stuff. So it was really smart. You know, I, I got them and I got my outline to them late. So instead of Thursday, you got pushed back. So we will be still doing, if you guys are asking like, hey, well, what happened in the Ninja Trader presentation? Don't worry, it's still coming. Thanks for hanging out, folks. We'll give you some more details on that as we go, and I will catch you guys on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend with the family. Love you guys. I am sending it off right here for me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis G, and the rest of the gang. Let's send out that big H-Town. See ya.